Uh, I would like to, you know, basically get the program started. Um, first of all, I hope you're enjoying your lunch. Uh, this has been an annual tradition for the last few years where um, we've had what's called the IETR State of State of the IETR speech or the State of the Union speech, whatever you want to call it, um, to keep members abreast of what's going on in the group, what we've done in the last year, what we plan to do in the coming year. Um, and I believe David Bird is going to be doing, um, I don't know if it's the first time they've ever done it, Ray, but uh, David is going to be doing his own speech tomorrow. So we can each, uh, each of our groups can benefit from learning about what the other is doing, the left and the right hand. Um, so without further ado, the state of the IETR, um, it's a building under construction, rapidly constructing a building from the ground up, hopefully to become a skyscraper one day. Um, we have a real sol solid foundation. We have a deep board with committed regulators. We have people from all over the country joining us um, through our scholarship fund. Um, where we have regulators like Tina from Houston who basically came to our shop and decided that, you know, we, we one, the first one was on us, the second one was on her. She brought all her folks back, enacted great reforms. The ITR has taken on so many different roles, but we have a really good foundation, and every single year we've been building on that. We're building new floors instead of, instead of demolishing or remodeling. Um, we're starting new things um, by scratch. We are not picking up pieces of problems that have been festering. Instead, we're ahead of the curve on the technology front, for instance. We're putting out reports telling about things that are about to happen before they happen. That's the key thing, to build a new floor, not to have um, some type of demolition where we're picking up pieces of a problem that's been festering and we're all playing catch up like too many of us have been doing for so many years. Now we have regulators who are going out there and instituting reforms like we did in New York back in the 90s. New Orleans, Chicago, Philadelphia, uh, San Francisco, um, uh, Austin, Houston, packages of reforms where finally uh, local politicians and local legislators and people who run these these, these various departments of transportation or, or, or whatever entity it might be are realizing that tourism is key, like we mentioned this morning, to the success of our city, and taxis and limos are key, as well as the airports. Um, we are hardwired, our building, for electricity with the state of the art. Uh, we have everything and anything technology. As you know, ITR spends all of its time focusing on how technology can make things better whether it's from a regulator's use of software and data and the GPS movement that was started with all of the vendors now that are benefiting from that going around the world. Um, so, of course, we want technology, though, that is, uh, like any homeowner, safe, uh, accountable, and inexpensive. Um, so that's the goal. We also have um, lots of parking spaces in our new building for accessible vehicles. Accessibility is at the forefront of our agenda. Um, we are, uh, as we'll talk a little bit more about in our breakout session today, like we did with our model regs for smartphones and ride sharing, we're doing a set of model regulations for vehicle accessibility. Okay, and we're also, hopefully, with Jim's help, um, we're going to be doing um, camera specifications and partition specifications. The model regulation movement is something that the, the members have really embraced. Uh, IETR is set up so that you don't have to cre recreate the wheel. I can't tell you how many times over the years regulators would call each other and there'd be a flurry of emails. Has anybody seen this? I have to testify tomorrow. Well, now everything is there. It's transparent. It's up front. Everybody has input. And um, so we are going to have lots of parking spaces for accessible vehicles. Accessibility is a priority, despite what anybody says. And we need to figure out a way that makes sense. Accessibility needs to make sense. Um, most buildings have uh, management companies or, uh, you know, services, building services. We have, um, we have somebody who's a regulatory concierge that works with us. Her name is Karen Cameron. Karen, could you stand up, our regulatory concierge? Um, I'm sorry, I, ha I knew you'd love it. 
Uh, Karen has been really the backbone of our group for many years. She's our executive director. She knows everything that's going on with the regulators. They call her all day. Um, when she gets tired of getting the call, she sends them to me. Um, but she's been committed 100% doing a lot of pro bono work as I have for the group for many, many years. And we, I think we owe you a round of applause, Karen. Why don't you stand up again? It's the least I can do for of dissing you for dinner last night, but um, anyway. Uh, the, we have a beautiful recreation center at, our, at ITR. Now, you know, you're looking at me like I'm crazy. We have, we have fun. Our conferences are fun. We rock. You know, we go, we go to ball games. We do fun things. I think it's important for people to let their hair down a little bit. Um, there's nothing like talking to a regulator with a couple of drinks in them, you know, and loosening up and uh, <laughs> talking shop. I mean, when I, when I first, and Alan, you'd remember this, when I was at the TLC, you know, the Plan YC, the famous Bloomberg Plan YC taxi plan was written on the back of a, back of a, a napkin uh, drinking wine with Rit uh, at, a, at a holiday party. That's how things are done. That's how business is done sometimes. So, you know, we like to have fun. So we got a great uh, recreation center with lots of activities. Um, my last point on this on this housing analogy is who owns the building? I don't think we want to rent this building. You own the building. This is a cooperative, kind of like a black car co-op. You guys own the building, and that's important to recognize. It's all of you who have a say in what we do and where we should be going. And we've been following direction from the board, um, and we've been getting feedback, but you know, this time we're going to have a, a wrap-up session, which we haven't done in a few years, like Ray is doing with his members at the end on Wednesday. We would encourage you to, we used to do those years ago, um, we would encourage you to hang around for those, because we want to make sure that we're going in the right direction. For our regulated members, and even for our sponsors and our, and our other associate members, we want to hear from you. We want to make sure that um, what we're doing makes sense, and the conferences, as well as the policies, um, you know, so basically, uh, this is your investment. This is your future. I'm very, very pleased uh, to be involved still with this group. Um, I'm very honored, you know, to, to, I feel like we've done great things in New York personally and Karen and Calgary, and we're built, building a greater future. There's no reason why IETR cannot build the skyscraper where every floor is another country around the world. With technology, there's no boundaries anymore. There's no reason. Okay, with dedicated funding streams and a way to sustain this organization better that we can have members of Asia. Um, we have Abu Dhabi coming for the last couple of years and uh, we've been talking to our friends there about building out a, a, a base in, um, um, over in, in, in the Middle East. We have um, Wim that we've been working with um, and James over in Amsterdam every year with a European conference. So um, we need to keep building on our foundation. Our Taxi Expo in Amsterdam, by the way, if anyone's interested, is October 24th. Um, talk about letting your hair down. You go to Amsterdam, you'll get some really great new ideas that you never would think of over here. Um, um, we, and another, another great new thing that we're doing, adding another level, is this, great, this joint conference. Who would have thought? I mean, it was a lot of like hesitancy at first. Should we, should we not do it? How does it work? You know, I don't think we've ever had a conference, Karen, that actually proceeded on time. I was expecting chaos because we have all these people, but, you know, everything is really part of the planning process. We, we may, I don't think we butted heads. That's, Ray, if we butted heads on this, that's nothing. Uh, I thought it was a very easy group to work with, and while there's a lot of moving parts, um, we'd love to do more stuff like this, not necessarily just with the AGTA, but with other groups. Um, I think it's a great concept, so I'm glad we did it. Um, I also want to um, thank um, the Australians. I know, where's Blair? Is Blair here? Hello, Blair. Um, another great thing that we did to build a new foundation in our worldwide expansion is to add a member to, uh, to the board who couldn't be with us on short notice, Bill Jonas. We now have an Australian on the board who's representing the National Regulators Group for all of Australia. I've been going to Australia every year to build a relationship with them, and they have a national group of every state. So we now have representation of every state in Australia. We're working on the Middle East, and, I, and Europe has been a work in progress. But we need to go out. We've been talking to, we've been, Moscow has been brought into the loop with us. But we're going to be going out further east. So um, we're very, very excited about um, building our building. 
Now, um, let's talk a little bit about membership and, and, and the benefits, because that's what it's all about. You're, you're taking uh, hard-earned taxpayer dollars that went into your FISCs, and the sponsors are taking money out of their budgets, and you need to get something in return. That's what an organization, a nonprofit like ours, is all about. So in the spirit of um, you know, going into uh, you know, some, some new tech texting lingo, everybody's heard of uh, friends with benefits, right? So IATRs, RWB, regulators with benefits. Now let me explain this. Don't get crazy. <laughs> Don't get crazy. Regulators with benefits. Um, what are your benefits of IETR ownership, your property interest in this organization? Um, well, let's first we'll talk about the model regulations. Um, we have uh, our unveiling of our final model regs um, today at 3.30 p.m. Um, that's open for regulators only, right? Did I get that right? And tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. for everybody. Um, this, this has been a great process. We're going to replicate it, like I said, with, um, in different areas. And if you have any suggestions on areas where we should have other model regulations, let's do it. It's, let me tell you something. It's going to save us all time, and some of the best minds are at work. We have a pedicab working group that Karen set up as well, for those of you who are interested in pedicabs. Um, you know, with our new potential mayor in New York, we might be setting up a horse and carriage, uh, um, horse and carriage uh, group. Um, but if anyone has ideas, let's bring them up on our Wednesday session because we want to hear from everybody. Um, the, the fact book. Let me talk a little bit about the fact book. Um, too often um, we've been working on, you know, multiple sets of facts, some from the industry, some that are made up, some from professors who disagree with one another. We need to have one set of facts. And in this day and age, we should be sharing everything. I mean, God knows, you know, Google has everything about us on their database, why can't, why can't we be sharing facts that regulators have? I'm sure they would love to get their hands on it too. But, but you know, in this day and age, the limits of privacy are different, okay? But there's no such thing as a privacy interest, in my opinion, to, to how many cabs are picking up and dropping off and where they're going. It's a public utility for crying out loud. But we need to share the data. So, you know, a lot of time they're consultants, they have their own data, everybody's got their little database and all this other stuff. We have a groundbreaking moment here, and that is our consultants have come together to do a pro bono project together, working with each other and the ITR. Um, and that's Dan Harrow and James Cooper. Could you guys stand up, please? Dan and James, you here? Uh, let's give them a round of applause for, <laughs> for helping out. Um, uh, we have an academic research committee, as you know, and they have a great session that's going to be taking place today. Dan and James are going to be asking you for what goes in the fact book, the topics. We, their goal is to come up with an outline and a plan to implement, and we need your, your data. They're going to give us their data, and ITR has data. We need to share the data, come up with a real fact book that has um, real statistics that people can rely on. Reporters sometimes are looking as you can imagine, at two or three different sources, and they all contradict each other. There's data out there, especially in San Francisco, there's a ton of it, New York. Um, everybody's got the data somewhere. It's not proprietary. It is, it is something that the public's entitled to. So the fact book is gonna benefit every one of you tremendously. When you're testifying before a legislative committee, when the mayor's office calls and says, well, how many cabs are in the country? You'd be surprised how many regulators, you know, are stupefied. You know, we need to know these facts and have them at the tip of our lips. The PASS Act, I spoke about it this morning, so I'm not gonna to go too much into it, but we have a lobbyist, Barry Lefkowitz, why don't you stand up so everybody knows him. He needs your help. <laughs> Barry has been doing pro bono work for us, you know, for the last year, and um, we, this PASS Act is going to happen. Senator Reid had personally said um, that, that he's gonna make it happen. Congressman King said he's gonna make it happen. The, the leadership, Roscom in the House, have introduced the bill. It's uh, Bill 2596, um, and we are going to be having our first session today at 2 and tomorrow at 2. So every regulator needs to be there, and I'll tell you why. We don't even need the PASS Act, from what I was told legally, to get started on the clearinghouse. I was just informed that if you have issues and you're concerned that people in neighboring states may have been convicted of serious criminal uh, crimes and then came into your state. If you're a hub, if you're in an area where you have a lot of borders around you, there's a way that we can sign you up for a clearinghouse now. And we need people who are interested 
uh, as volunteers to, to take a look at whether it would work for you. Um, it's, you know, in this day and age, as we saw, unfortunately, um, we have Greg Winfrey here in the Navy Yard, there was a shooting. This is not, a, this is, our society is, is still not safe. There are people out there. Um, it's no, it's no, um, you know, it's no secret. The taxi industry has been infiltrated over the years with people who are involved in terrorism. And I'll say it, it it's true. It is a fact. The first World Trade Center bombing, there, you know, the people who were involved were taxi drivers. Okay, um, we came close in New York to actually getting something done with uh, national criminal background checks. Um, and, and it's sad that it didn't happen. Um, and I said this at the board meeting the other day. We basically had a situation where limo drivers had bombs in their cars and they were gonna blow up the city and all the transportation hubs. The, fo the plot was foiled, okay? And, and Governor Pataki and all the politicians set up, we're gonna change the law tomorrow, we're gonna change the law. And then the very, um, the very liberal assembly um, basically blocked it. Okay, so that's the story of a lot of different states in this country. And that's why we need a federal law, which is the PASS Act, which wipes out the state legislatures that don't know um, what they're really doing. Because I don't think they really fully understand the damage until people get killed. Okay, this is an industry where people are on the street. A lot of people are dangerous. Okay, not all of them, but there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. Okay, and if we're talking about deregulating, you know, even more so, okay? You know, cities are gonna start deregulating for these apps. Well, we need to have strong criminal background check laws and they need to have background check if you're gonna open up the market to everybody. You know, it's, it's, it's really the, the, the raison d'etre, this is why we exist. It's for public safety and we need your help. Barry needs you, if you can get your legislative mayor's offices to help him get this thing passed. We need your help in signing up and going to these workshops, even if you don't go for the whole time. Come in there, fill out the survey. We need, we need to go to Capitol Hill. We had a great day on the Hill last year for our 25th anniversary conference in DC. We established great relationships. We are a player at DC. We are a player now around the country. IETR was previously unheard of. We are on the tip of every, the lips of every legislator in all these different cities and states and in Congress now. Um, so let's, let's get that done and um, and let's get signed up. Um, the Academic Research Committee, uh, we have Rita, it's not an ex-girlfriend here. We have Greg Winfrey from the USDOT, um, who's gonna explain what Rita is. And um, we're working with the TRC, with Camille, and uh, with Ray's University in Missouri. And we have a TRB subcommittee that we helped, but was primarily Ray and, and James that helped get approval um, for the TRB to finally focus on taxi and limo research um, in an official way. And we hope that that subcommittee that was born out of paratransit will become a full committee. Um, in terms of consulting, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you have consulting services at your fingertips. Uh, Karen recently did on behalf of the ITR. We, we have peer review. There's no better place to go for a peer review than regulators that do your job. We did a great project for Thunder Bay, Ontario. <laughs> Uh, we work with other consultants, um, you know, and at a discounted price. Of course, as you know, I've been doing a lot of pro bono work, um, a lot of it, and uh, very proud of it, and my firm is very proud of it, and my university is very proud of it. Um, we've done work in dis the District of Columbia drafting regulations. Um, we have, is Tom Moody here from London? Tom, well, we're doing a pro bono study uh, on the TFL and, and the taxi industry there, as well as... Uh, uh, we've done work in Maryland, Colorado, California, Miami, all over the globe, and we're there for you. If you need help and you can't afford it, okay, we'll help if we can. You know, um, but, you know, you know, any little piece of money you can give us is good, right? No, I'm just kidding. No, but seriously, no, I'm, my firm is committed, uh, at least for now, on behalf of ITR, until we get into a full-blown operation to do pro bono work as needed, drafting regulations, helping with situations that you have. And also we have Karen and the ITR um, for, you know, to assist and work with, with other consultants. Um, training, okay, this is a new announcement. Okay, um, in addition to the PASS Act, where we will be offering ITR services as, as a channeling agent and a clearinghouse, and you'll hear about that if you go to the workshop, um, you'll be able to get your criminal background checks done through us, even now. But when the PASS Act passes, for less cost, 
you'll get things that nobody else in the market can deliver for you. On the training side, we've decided, the board, uh, thanks to Tom Drischler, has actually voted that we're going to be developing the first ever endorsed training program for, for, for taxi drivers. And we also decided to explore a boot camp concept for regulators, regulatory boot camp. We have all this turnover, new mayors, people you know being fired and new people coming on board. We need to train regulators and maybe we'll send them away, maybe to Bermuda for a, a week, you know, and, and we'll, we'll train them on how to be regulators. There's so many people that come up to me and, and tell me, you know what, this, this group, I never would have made it without this group. We, we want to be there for you. We want to be there to assist you. Um, the, last, the last point is advocacy. And uh, I, we don't take this lightly. Um, in addition to the lobbying that we're doing, okay, we have been intervening in proceedings all around the country to fight for um, sanity and for safe, accountable regulation, especially on the technology front. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, I know there are technology people here. We were the first people to ask for technology, and, and please, don't forget that. Let's go back to the, the 2009 conference in New York where the industry started getting a little antsy when the panel of Chris, Mark Cohen, Tom, a couple of other people started saying, well, wouldn't it be great, and David Pogue did, if we had a smartphone? So, you know, we were the first that had the idea, not you, with all due respect. We were the people that had the idea. And then other people started doing it. Some companies came out there claiming they did it before others. It is what that it is, who cares? Bottom line is, is that we support it. Unequivocally, 100%, we don't want to go back to phono records, as some people would suggest. That's ridiculous. In New York and all these other cities, we have GPS, we have credit cards. We're gradually putting technology anywhere and everywhere into the cabs. And in San Francisco, we got this new system where every cab is watched and monitored. We have an amazing amount of data that you'll be hearing about tomorrow. D technology and data are the future. We're 100% behind it, but let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. You cannot deregulate an industry and have people flying around on the fly, picking up people and fist bumping each other without licenses. People are going to get killed. This is serious stuff. It's not a joke. You know, so let's, for those people that are forcing the envelope, please just hear us out. We're not here to stop anything. We just want some sanity to prevail. Okay, it's not going to cut it that a company is going to do a Lexus search of felons for the last seven years and keep it in their records and, oh, maybe the PUC will audit it. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. There are some things the government has to do because we can't take a chance. And you know what? As soon as someone's injured, you know, everything's going to hit the fan in California. It will. It will hit the fan. And, and those commissioners should be held accountable. When that felon who committed rape eight years ago gets into one of those cars and, and does something really bad. So I just ask you to have a little bit of sanity as technology companies, if you're listening, to think about what the ramifications are of your market entry. Um, we are going to continue. We're not going away. We're in Miami. Yes, we are in Miami helping Joe Mora. Okay, I met with the mayor of Miami for two hours. Yes, I, I did register as a lobbyist, so I had to. Um, but I met, I met with the mayor. I wasn't paid a cent. And I told them how I felt. And let's see what happens there. We've been to Maryland, we've been to Colorado, we've been a party to the PUC, thanks to Tom and, and Chris Hayashi working with IETR, and we're not gonna stop. If we feel something's okay, we'll leave it alone, but we feel that there's something that's wrong. The board of directors and the app committee have spoken. Now, not, not, not every regulator may agree, but most of the regulators do that we need safe and accountable regulations. That's why we have our model regulations. It's not there necessarily to force it upon anybody, it's like the Uniform Commercial Code or the Model Rules of Ethics for the ABA. No difference. You know, you guys take what, that's a member service. But on advocacy, if we see that something's going wrong and a regulator wants us there, we're going to be there. So if you need help, we're the government. We're here to help. No, I'm serious. Uh, I don't work for the government anymore. But we will be there to help you. I know you love that, Ray. Uh, we're, we will help you. And we will be there. And well, I'll pay out of my pocket to come there and help you. Um, we will back you up and we will, if you are being railroaded, okay, there's a lot of injustices that occurred over the last year. Okay, we stood up for those regulators who are being railroaded by the press. And you know what? If you're being silenced by your mayor, we will be your voice. Call me. 
okay? I'm not beholden to anybody except for this board and this group anymore, okay? So if you want to say something that can't be said, I will say it for you because I'm tired of, of listening to the distortion and the lies that are out there, and I'm sure all of you are. And we need to back up our people that are doing a good, honest job. They're not evil. They're not cronies. You're not bad with anybody. I mean, what are we talking about? Has anybody ever been to our conferences with the industry and the regulators? Industry and regulators don't necessarily see eye to eye, for crying out loud. So we are the voice. We're your voice, the voice of the regulator. We won't be silenced. We won't be soundproofed in our building by powerful lobbyists or ethically challenged legislators overzealous government agencies, or well-financed and manipulative social media campaigns. We will not be silenced. We will not be, our building will not be bulldozed. It will not be steamrolled. It will not be demolished or evacuated from our regulatory landscape. We will not be intimidated. We will not, we will fight back and will stand up for what is right and beneficial for passengers and for the public that we are there to protect. This is our job. That is our mission. It's in our mission of our bylaws, and we'll continue to press on undeterred and with resolve. That's the state of the ITR. Now, thank you. There's a ballot box at the, at the I can't help myself. I just, but, but by really, I really do, we all feel passionate about this group. We need to stick together and we need to move forward. Now, moving forward, 